Hello everyone, welcome to this session. I hope all of you can hear me and see me clearly. So guys, this is a warm-up session for the year-long courses that we have planned for all of you. So we'll be conducting classes covering the entire 11th and 12th syllabus starting from June 4th. So make sure you do attend the sessions. They'll be super useful for all of you. Okay, so today I would like to conduct a warm-up to cover the basics of this chapter which is sequence and series. The reason this chapter is chosen is because many of you are moving from 10th to 11th will be having a basic idea of what a sequence is and what is a series. Okay, so let us try to recap them and do some interesting problems. Shall we get started? Awesome guys. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Shimon Joseph and I'm a B.Tech and M.Tech graduate from IIT Madras. I've been teaching for almost six years now, mentoring over 5000 amazing students like all of you. And when I was like you guys a few years back, I too took the JE mains and I was one of the state toppers guys. And I'm also a KVPS scholar. So that's a quick intro about myself. With that, let us get started with the topic for today, which is sequence and series. Guys, before we jump into this topic, right, let us understand what this term literally means. So whenever we talk about the sequence, what do we understand by that? So sequence means what we usually tend to think of it as one after the other. So that means you have a collection of items. So that is a basic idea you should have when you talk about the term which is called as sequence. So how do we understand it in a mathematical sense? Because all of you might have learnt the basics of it. Let me go a bit faster over here. Sequence is nothing but a collection of objects or collection of numbers let's say. Because in maths we talk about numbers right? And Whenever we are studying about sequences in 11th standard, you will hear this term very frequently. What is that term? The term is called as real sequences. Okay. So most of the time we will be talking about real sequences. And why do we say real sequences? Till 10th standard, whatever we learned is actually real numbers. We learned irrational numbers. We went, we went to rational numbers. Then we saw integers natural numbers, whole numbers and all of it, isn't it? So they all come under the whole bracket of real numbers. But guys, in 11th standard, I'm sure some of you will be knowing it already, you will learn something even beyond real numbers that is called as complex numbers. Let us not worry about that right now. We will go to it when we move into the 11th syllabus, okay? So right now, we will be talking only about real sequences. So what do I mean by real sequence? A real sequence is nothing but a collection of real numbers. That's it. So let me say you have a1, a2, all the way up to an. What are they? They are just numbers. So there are n numbers. I have a collection of them that will form my sequence. So here the important thing to note is that a sequence need not follow any order. That is very important. Okay guys, so let me write an example. So if you have 1, minus 1, 2, 0, 3, 2, 1, 5 and so on. So is this a sequence? Can you guys look at it and tell me? Just look at it. Do you feel that this might make a sequence? Yes or no? Please leave, leave the answer down in the comment. I will have a look at it. So now for all those who said yes, is this a sequence? Yes, you guys are absolutely right. Super awesome. Great job. Now, for those who said no, guys, you have to understand that a sequence need not have order. The only reason which I feel you might have said no is because you would have felt, sir, there is no order to this. You didn't have any pattern to this because all of us are used to patterns, right? We do exams like NTSE and all that wherein mental ability is asked. So we are very good at finding patterns. I'm sure all of you guys are. So here you cannot fix a pattern. So you tend to feel it is not a sequence. But guys, what did I say? The only condition for a set of numbers to be a sequence is that they have to be there. Okay. They do not have any order to them. Clear? So that is an example of sequence. Now I'll ask you another question. Let's make it even more interesting. So I will give you now 2, 4, 8, 16, that's it. Let's say four numbers. I don't want to trouble you with a lot of numbers. So we have just four numbers collection. Now I want to understand whether this is a sequence or not. Can you think about it guys? 
Can you think about it and answer it in the comments? I'm sure you would have answered it by now. Let us see what is happening over here. Now 2, 4, 8, 16. Is it a collection of number? Yes, it is a collection of 4 real numbers. Okay. Now, is there any pattern attached to it? Yes, of course. I can see a pattern. I have observed questions like this when I was preparing for mental ability. Is it not? So, what is happening here? 2 into 2 is 4. 4 into 2 is 8. 8 into 2 is 16. So, there is a pattern attached to it. So, is it a sequence? Can you answer that? It will still be a sequence, guys. Because sequence, whether it has order or if it doesn't have order, if I have a collection of numbers, it is going to be a sequence. As simple as that. All of you clear with it? Now, is that fine? Perfect guys. So now, let us move on to something called as a series. This all basic definition. We'll quickly go through them and solve some interesting questions. Okay. Perfect. So now, when I come to series, what do I mean by that? So series is nothing but representation guys. So if you have terms of the sequence, right? So A1, A2, A3, all the way up to AN are the terms of my sequence. What is A1? A1 is the first term. A2 is the second term. Likewise, AN is the nth term. Okay. So now, how do I represent a series? Series is nothing but whenever you have sequence, if you represent the terms of the sequence in this fashion, if you represent the terms of the sequence in this fashion, it is called as a series. So guys, please note, series is not the addition of all of this. Okay. So if I give you 2 plus 4 plus 6, 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16, that representation is called series. Okay. So don't tell me series is the summation of all of that. That is not right. So for example, let's say 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16. How much is that? 6, 14, 14 plus 16, I think it should be 30, if I'm not wrong. Yep, that is correct. So the summation of all of this is 30. So guys, when I say series, it is this representation alone. This representation of a sequence is called as a series. So when I say series, don't sum it and give me one, one line answer. I mean one digit answer. Getting it? So don't give me the summation as the answer. That is not what is meant by series. So series is more like a representation. So representation wherein the terms of the sequence are combined by the arithmetic operator plus. Getting it? So that is how you interpret series. Very basic definition. That's it. Now let's come to something which is important for us. That we will be studying in 11th standard in much more detail. That is progression. Okay, so what do you mean by progression? So progression is something all of us have done for a long time and that is because progressions are nothing but sequences with patterns. So progressions are nothing but sequences which have pattern attached to it. So here I can say that 2, 4, 8, 16 is a progression. Why is it a progression? Because you can see that 2 into 2 4 into 2, 8 into 2 is that. Therefore, it is going to be a progression. It has a pattern to it. But can I say this is a progression? Is this going to be a progression? Minus 1, 1, 2, 0, 3, 2, 1, 5. Can you guys comment it down quickly? Will that be a progression? Do you think so? Of course not. It is not going to be a progression because it is a sequence which has no pattern. So whenever there is a no pattern, pattern attached to a sequence, I will say it won't make a progression. So guys, I will make a statement here. Please understand this carefully. I can say that all progressions will be a sequence. But I cannot say the reverse. All sequences need not be progressions. Okay. I hope that's clear to everyone. So guys, with that, let's move on. Let's see some question. We have been doing a lot of theory now. Let's see one interesting question. Completely based on your mental ability or logic. It is not got anything to do with formulas or stuff to remember. Nothing like that. Okay. So let us have a look at this question. So this is a question which is coming under series. So this is a series, right? 
So what am I asking you to find here? I am asking you to find the sum of this series. Okay, because I put an equal to symbol over there, right? So I want you to find the sum of this series. How do you go about solving this? That is a very unique approach. I want all of you to pause the video now, give it a try and then come back so that you'll appreciate the way it is done. Okay, all of you ready for it? So yeah, try it now and I will go to the solution. Perfect. So guys, here I would like to observe something. Is there any pattern to it? 2, 6, 12, 20. Is there any pattern to it? 2 into 3 is 6. 6 into 2 is 12. But after that I can't multiply. So there is no multiplication pattern to it. So let's see addition. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. 12 plus 8 is 20. Okay. So addition pattern is there. I can say that. But can I do anything with that? Because my addition pattern is in the denominator. It's in the denominator, right? So I still can't do anything. But there is a way to solve this. One thing which you have to note here is how can I write this 2 guys? Can I say 2 is equal to 1 into 2? And can I say that 6 is equal to 2 into 3? And can I say that 12 is equal to 3 into 4? And what is 20? 4 into 5. Can you see the? Can you see the pattern? So this denominator can be written as 1 into 2. This denominator can be written as 2 into 3. This one can be written as 3 into 4. Now that is something which I have with which I can work. Okay. So let me write it down. I'll erase this. I hope all of you have noted it down. Now I will start working with that. So how do I start working with that? So let me write it as 1 by 1 into 2 plus 1 by 2 into 3 plus 1 by 3 into 4 all the way up to what? 1 by how do you write 380? 380 if you factorize it you will get it to be 19 into 20 is it not? 19 into 20 will be my 380. So guys now how can I reduce this or how can I simplify this further? I got something but still I am not very sure whether this is the right method. But notice one thing here. What is the difference between 2 and 1? 1. What is the difference between 3 and 2? 1. What is the difference between 4 and 3? The difference is 1. Similarly, 20 and 19, the difference is 1. So all of them have one thing common, which is my difference is constant. So when my difference is constant, and if that difference is present in my numerator, why don't I bring it? Why don't I bring it in a numerator? Let's do that. Let's do that together, shall we? So this will be 2 minus 1 by 1 into 2 plus how did I write 2 minus 1? Because I have 1 already present in my numerator and in my denominator I have the product 1 cross 2. So I want to bring 2 minus 1 in the numerator and I can. I can do that freely. Okay, same thing can I do here? I will write it as 3 minus 2 by Got it? So let's proceed further. Let's do the same thing for every, for every term. All the way up to 20 minus 19 by 20 into 19. That's it. Done. Now, obviously I can't bring it back to this term. I brought it from here. Now I need to work with this. So what I will do is, I will write it like this. 2 by 1 into 2 minus 1 by 1 into 2 plus 3 by 2 into 3 minus 2 by 2 into 3 plus 4 by 3 into 4 minus 4 by uh, minus 3 by 3 into 4 all the way up to plus 20 by 19 into 20 minus 19 by 19 into 20 getting it now so what will happen? 2 and 2 cancel, 3 and 3 cancel, 2 and 2 cancel, 4 and 4 cancel, 3 and 3 cancel, 20, 20 cancel, 90, 19 cancel. So that will leave me with 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 all the way up to 1 by 19 minus 1 by 20. So what is here? Can you observe? This will cancel with this, 
this will cancel with this, this will cancel with this, this will cancel with this. So what is left out? 1 minus 1 by 20. So the answer is, that's it. So that is how you solve this question. I hope all of you have got it. It's a very simple one. More to do with observation and it's a question based on series. So guys, this is what I call as method of differences. Okay, it's a very powerful tool which we will learn in 11th standard. Okay, so this whatever we did just now is called as method of differences. So I write the terms as a difference of two and then I keep cancelling them. That will lead me to the answer. So very powerful tool which we will learn when we are looking at the long term course guys. We will be starting off in June. So please do take part in them and let's learn together. Okay, I hope all of you have got it. If you have any doubts, always comment it down below. I will get back to you. If you have any doubt in this method, do let me know. It's quite straightforward, right? So I wrote it as a product and then I used difference to split it into two terms and then I started cancelling them which leaves me with 1 minus 1 by 20. Okay, now one confusion which you might have is how did you cancel 1 by 19 sir? Why not 1 by 20? So look at the pattern in which cancellation is going on. That will give you an idea, right? So second term, first term, second term, first term, second term, first term. Getting it? So second term with first term. Getting it? So that is why I cancel 1 by 19. Look at the pattern in which cancellation is going on. If you do not understand this, maybe you write it down fully. Initially, maybe you write it down fully because there are only 20 terms, right? Not a big deal. So initially when you are not able to get the pattern of cancellation, better write down all the terms and then cancel it out so that your concepts are clear. Getting it? So shall we move guys? This is a very simple question. Let's move forward. Now let's get into our actual 12th or the topics that we are interested in. Now the first and the foremost topic which I want to throw some light upon will be arithmetic progression. And arithmetic progression I'm sure all of you will be very happy because we have already learnt in 10th standard. We learned the basics of AP. We saw that AP will be of the pattern wherein the difference is going to be constant. So let us revisit that because some of you might have forgotten. It's very natural. Let's revisit that and then we'll go upward slowly. Now, what is an arithmetic progression and why do we have to study that? First of all, if you want to appreciate arithmetic progression, you need to know what is a progression and that we have covered in today's class. So definitely because it is called as a progression, I know that is a pattern attached to it. That is a very important thing. Okay. Now, an AP, let's say you have terms like this, A1, A2, all the way up to AN. So these are the terms in my AP. What is the speciality of AP? The speciality of an arithmetic progression is that the difference between two consecutive terms is going to be the same throughout. So let me write that down exactly as I said it. What did I say now? The difference between two consecutive terms is going to be the same throughout. So let us write that down. So what is the difference between consecutive terms? That means A2 minus A1. And then what is the other consecutive difference? A3 minus A2. What is the other consecutive difference? A4 minus A3. And all the way up to AAN minus AN minus 1. Okay. So that is my consecutive difference for the entire AP. Clear? So for those who are not aware of the notation, let me reiterate it again. A1 is called as a first term. AN is called as a last term. And A2 is the second term. I hope that makes sense. So what is A3 naturally? A3 is the third term which I can write here. Okay. So A4 is the next term which follows the third term. Is that clear to everyone? Brilliant guys. So now I know this is equal to D. 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 Why did I choose D? Because this is the difference, right? Difference between A2 and A1. Second and first term, the difference is equal to D. Let's say D can be anything. Now, I know from the definition, the difference is going to be the same for A2 minus A1, 
a3 minus a2 and so on and that is why I equated everything to d. So now if I want to find out a2 how will I write it a2 is equal to a1 plus d clear a2 is equal to a1 plus d and a3 is equal to what a2 plus d which will be equal to what a2 plus d from here if I take a2 to the other side it will become a2 plus d but now wait a minute do I know a2 in terms of a1 yes of course a2 is a1 plus d plus d which will be a1 plus 2d similarly if I want to calculate a4 a4 how will I write it a3 plus d but do I know a3 yes I know a3 already what is a3 a3 is a1 plus 2d plus d so a4 is a1 plus 3d now I sense a pattern what is the pattern I sense a1 is a first term so a2 can be written as a1 plus 1d a3 can be written as a1 plus 2d a4 can be written as a1 plus 3d so what is the pattern if I have 4 here I have 3 here if I have 3 here I have 2 here if I have 2 here I have 1 here so if I look at the last term it will be a1 because everyone has a1 right a1 is there a1 is there a1 is there so a1 should be present plus what should be here n minus 1 so this will be the nth term of my ap very crucial very crucial ideally i would expect all of you to remember it that's the result okay guys and i'm sure most of you know it already because it's there in 10th standard okay clear now after this what do i want to cover some things some ideas which i can give you are let us note it down so if you want to take if you want to take three terms in an ap you take it to be like this a minus d a a plus d and when you take it like this guys please note you will take three terms to be an ap in this fashion when the sum is given okay so whenever sum of an ap is given if you take the three terms to be like this it's very easy to solve questions right because what will be the sum of this the sum of this will be equal to 3a so if they give you the sum directly you can get the value of a is that clear because why are we talking about this ap has n terms right so n can be anything depending on the question so if in your question they ask you to take three terms in ap take it to be in this fashion if sum is given so that you can solve and find the value of a quite easily clear guys so that is one point what is the second point if you are given the question is about sum of an ap you have a formula for sum of n terms of an ap right what is that n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 times of d i hope you guys remember that so this is summation of an ap the second point which i want you to remember this is a result again okay sum of n terms of an ap i'm sure all of you have derived it and that is why we are not focusing on it right now there's no need to do that let us go and see a problem let us try to solve some questions so this much theory is a brief background of arithmetic progression there is a lot to it we will add it once we go into the regular sessions okay guys perfect so i hope all of you have taken it down if you want to take a screenshot you can do it right now because i'm going to close the slide and move to the next one now this is a question which came in 2018 je mains and i'm sure you guys will be able to solve it so please pause the screen and do give it a try and once you have tried it come back so that we can discuss the solution together okay so guys here you have three positive real numbers a b and c and it is given that a b and c satisfy this relation now given that a b and c satisfy this relation i want you all to find out whether a b and c are in ap or they are in gp or b c and a are in ap or gp you need to figure that out okay i know most of you do not know what is a gp the majority of you may not be knowing it but i will give you a hint the answer is not b and the answer is not c it is a or d i will give you that hint 
So be comfortable, be at peace. Don't worry about GP. It is not this, it is not this. Okay. I just want you to solve A and D and verify it which is correct and let me know. Okay. Is that fine guys? Perfect. So let us get started solving because we don't have much time. We will go to the solution part of it now. Okay. So the way you solve it is first open these squares. Okay. Open this. What do you get? You will get 225 A square plus 9B square plus 25C square minus 75 AC minus 45 AB minus 15 BC equal to 0. Okay, so what did I do? I opened the brackets. I brought everything to left hand side. So 225 comes from this. How did 225 come? 9 into 25. How did 9B square come? 9 into B square. 25C square. 25 into minus 3, minus 75. And then 15 into 3, 45. When it comes to the left hand side, minus 45 AB. And then 15B into C, 15BC. When it comes to the left hand side, it will be minus 15 BC done. Now, now it is going to be identities. So guys, you will understand how crucial it is to remember the identities which you learned in 10th standard. Okay. So please don't take them light. You have to keep revising your 10th standard geometry, identities and trigonometry also. Okay. And that will be a very good way to enter 11th standard. So if you are in your holidays, I would recommend you do that. Revise your 8th, 9th and 10th triangles and circles properties and algebraic identities. You will see a very beautiful identity used here, which I'm sure is there in NCRT. Okay, let's get solving. So this is going to be 15A, the whole square, plus what is 9B? 9B square can be written as 3B, the whole square. Do you agree with me on that? Yes, it's a perfect square, right? So similarly, 25C square can be written as 5c the whole square isn't it then let's reduce the other terms so what is what is 75 can i say 75 is 15a into 5c is that correct so 15 into 5 is 75 and ac is already there brilliant now 45ab can i write 45 as 15a into 3b i can write this as 15a times of 3b okay now what is the last one 15 bc can i write 15 bc as 3b into 5c i can write this as 3b into 5c and that is equal to 0 perfect i wrote it in a superb form which some of you might have realized if you remember that identity okay now for those who are not still getting it i will let you know what is the identity in a while okay but before that let me take this to be capital a so guys the term inside the bracket i will take it to be capital a i will take this term inside the bracket to be capital b i will take this term to be capital c inside the bracket so can i write this above expression as a square plus b square plus c square minus a b minus b c minus c a equal to zero have you seen this anywhere else? Have you guys seen this expression anywhere else in your 10th standard? Okay. Any idea? Yes. So yeah, let's look at it. It's a very good expression. I will erase this part guys if that's okay with you because I need some space to solve. I will erase this part. Okay. Now, I will help you out with this. This can be reduced as half a minus b whole square plus b minus c whole square plus c minus a whole square. Don't you think so? Guys, don't you think this is how this expression is reduced to? And we know it is equal to 0 because right hand side I have equal to 0. I hope you guys can see that. I have equal to 0. So this also has equal to 0. So this one also have equal to 0. Now, you must have studied in 10th standard, your teacher would have frequently told you, right? Some of the squares of real numbers can never be negative. They can at the minimum be 0 when all of them are identically 0. Some of the squares of real numbers, if it is equal to 0, it is only possible 
when all of them are zero guys isn't that right you must have studied that so here the best part about this identity is if i reach this i can say that my a okay why am i writing double okay i can say that my a is equal to b is equal to c brilliant so that is the best part about this question so my capital a will be equal to capital b will be equal to capital c and guys this is an identity i hope all of you can prove it it's very easy just open this just open this you will get the answer i'm sure all of you can open a minus b whole square b minus c whole square and c minus a whole square so when you open and add all of it you will get exact same relation which i gave here which is the representation of this one okay so now what did i get i got the condition to be a equal to b equal to c now i'll remove everything all the unwanted i'll remove this is not needed this is not needed so i proved that a is equal to b equal to c now what is a a is 15a so 15a is equal to 3b is equal to 5c that's it again it's time to erase because this is not needed so what do i have can i divide everything by 45 if i everything if i divide everything by 45 i will get a by 3 is equal to b by 15 is equal to c by 9 i can still divide by okay i can still divide by 3 so i'll get i'm sorry multiply by 3 i'll get a is equal to b by 5 is equal to c by 3 So whenever you have three equalities, just assume that it is equal to some k. Obviously, if they are all equal, they are equal to some value k. K can be anything, guys. Don't worry about it. So what is a? A is equal to k. B is equal to five k, and c is equal to three k. Now, is a b c in a p? Check it. If a b c in a a p, you know that two b should be equal to a plus c. that is a condition for ap how do we get that because if i say abc are in ap then b minus a consecutive difference consecutive numbers difference must be equal so that should be equal to c minus b so if i replace it and write it i can say that 2b should be equal to a plus c that is how i get this condition so is this satisfying this condition let's look at it 2 into b is what 10k is 10k equal to 4k obviously not because a plus c is 4k 2b is 10k that is wrong so option a is wrong and because i told you b and c are wrong by now you know the answer but let us verify it guys okay let us verify it now again what is given b c and a are in ap so if b c and a are in ap look at the order what can i say c minus b should be equal to a minus c that means what 2c is equal to b plus a Okay, so what is c? C is three k. Two c is six k. Is that equal to b plus a? Yes, I got the answer. Okay, so that is how you solve it. I hope all of you have understood it. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, brilliant guys. So that is how you solve it. I hope all of you like this question. With that, let us move forward. If you have any doubts, please do let me know in the comments. I will help you out with the. clarification now moving on to something new what is that we have here geometric progression which is the next thing which we'll be looking at after ap i'm sure ap you guys will be knowing already so let us move on to gp and now let us look at the basics of gp what is a geometric progression so guys in ap we had a definition right what was the definition the consecutive terms were in a difference constant difference now in gp the consecutive terms will be having a constant ratio that is very important so in the previous example where we saw ap the common difference is taken to be d so here in a geometric progression i will have something called as constant ratio which is r okay so let us have a look at it so first i will give you an example of what is a geometric progression let us have a look at that So the example of geometric progression is what we saw earlier, two, four, eight, sixteen. So this is a GP which has four terms. 
why do i call it a geometric progression does it obey the definition which i gave all of you just now what is the definition the consecutive terms are going to be in a constant ratio so is the ratio same here let us have a look at it 4 by 2 is it equal to r let's say it's 2 yes 8 by 4 is it equal to r yes 16 by 8 is it equal to r why do i define r so just like how we did it for ap wherein i took it to be d the common difference here i will take the constant ratio to be r is that clear perfect guys so here 4 by 2 8 by 4 16 by 8 are all the constant ratios right that is going to be 2 2 and 2 so it is a gp because the ratio is same it is maintained throughout okay now let us go to our ideal general case okay this is an example let us solve a general case you must get used to that guys okay so don't be always looking for numbers because still 10 we are so used to having numbers in our calculations but now you have to get acquainted with variables as well okay let's get started perfect so what do we have here let's say a1 a2 all the way up to a n is my geometric progression so these are the terms in my geometric progression and the same notation holds true here as well so a1 is the first term a2 is the second term and all the way up to a n which is the last term okay guys so how can i write a2 as a2 by a1 is equal to r a3 by a2 is equal to r and a n by a n minus 1 will also be equal to r because it is constant ratio right the ratio must be maintained throughout the entire gp clear so now how do i write a2 a2 can be written as a1 r how can i write a3 a3 can be written as a2 r is that right so now a2 i know is a1 r so it can be written as a1 r square how would i write a4 a4 is equal to a3r what is a3 a3 is a1r square into r will be a1r power 3 again you know where i am going at i am going in the direction of finding my nth term in terms of first term and the constant ratio okay clear so how do i write my nth term can you look at the pattern here 2 will have a1 3 will have a1, 4 will have a1, so obviously my a n will have a1, okay? Now, second term has r power 1, third term has r power 2, fourth term has r power 3, so nth term will have, that's it. That is my nth term of a GP, which is similar to what we got in AP, right? The same pattern I followed in order to derive my nth term of a GP. Is that clear to everyone? Perfect. So guys, let us have a look at the important facts in a GP. So if you are given three terms in a GP, you have to take them as A by R, A and AR. When, when your product is given. So guys, this is a general method of solving. May not work 100% of the time. Okay. So usually what is done Whenever product is given, let's say three terms are given in GP and then product is given. Why should we use this? Because if I multiply all of them, what do I get? The product of all of them is A cube. So if my product is given to me, I can directly get the value of A. So that is the beauty of this method. Okay. So this is a small pointer which I want to give to all of you before moving on to solving a question. So are you guys ready? Shall we solve a question? Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead to a question. So guys, this is the question for all of you. Please try it out. It is given that the sum of three numbers in a GP is 26 and their product is 216. You have to find the numbers. Very basic. Okay. Please pause the video. Try it out with whatever we discussed and then come back to the solution. Okay. Good. So now I will start solving it. Please listen carefully guys. First thing is the numbers are in GP. How many numbers are there? There are three numbers. So let us take them to be A1, 
a2 a3 but wait a minute i gave you a result wherein if my product is given i will take the numbers to be a by r a and ar definitely i will go by this method why because this will give me the value of a directly so now you guys can correlate to what i said so let us take the product of this what will you get the product of this is going to be a cube how is a cube a by r into a into ar r and r cancel a into a into a will be a cube and that is equal to 216 isn't that right guys all of you clear with it now how do i get the value of a a is the cube root of 216 which all of us know is 6 that's it that is the beauty of this method i can get the value of a directly but now i am not satisfied with a right because i need to figure out my r also only then i can get the terms because what did they ask find the numbers i didn't find the numbers i just found out the middle term so let us use this result to get the other answer what is the other information i didn't use here the other information which i didn't use here is the sum of the numbers which is 26 i still didn't use this right so let us try what happens if we use that okay so what are the three numbers i took i took it as a by r a and ar we found out the value of a to be 6 so it is 6 by r 6 and 6r so now we know that the sum is 26 right so let's do that so 6 by r plus 6 plus 6r is equal to 26 so now we are approaching our answer i hope all of you can see that okay because i have a equation r which can be solved right because this will lead to a quadratic in r which will be like 6 plus 6r plus 6r square is equal to 26r okay So shall we take a factor of two common? It will be three plus three r plus three r square equal to thirteen r. So that leaves me with three r square minus ten r plus three equal to zero. So three r square splitting of middle term quadratic, right? I'll factorize it. So that will be three r into r minus three plus one into I'm sorry minus one. R minus three equal to zero, so R equal three or one by three. That's it done. So if R is equal to three, what do you get? If R is equal to three, you get six by three, six and six into three, which will be two, six and eighteen. And similarly, if R is equal to one by three, what do you get? If R is equal to one by three, you will get eighteen, six and two, which is almost the same in reverse. clear guys so that is how you solve it i hope all of you have understood it so let me just move away you guys can note it down and if you have any doubt let me know so what i did here is i factorize the quadratic by splitting the middle term which is something you learn in 10th right clear guys so that is how we proceeded we arrived at the value of r and once r is obtained my question is done because the only two variables i had at the start was a and r i got a first in one shot through the method i taught you a by r a and ar will be direct so once a is done the only variable left out is r how do i figure out r i have the sum given to me right so i got a quadratic i solved it both of them are valid because both the answers seem to satisfy my given condition so both these gps are correct so let me give you a small idea here this is called as an increasing gp okay because you can see that the numbers are increasing in value this is called as a decreasing gp okay so you have to pay attention to that because sometimes in question they'll give you the sum of three numbers in an increasing gp is 26 so if they give you the question like that my answer would be this only not this getting it because it was said it's an increasing gp but here nothing is mentioned so both are fine so guys that was the last question for the day with that let's conclude our session i hope all of you had a good time and you learned something new and guys this was just a warm up to make sure you guys are acquainted with the 
concepts of 10th and are ready for 11th. So from June 4th onwards, we'll be diving into the topics in much more detail. We'll be discussing a lot of questions. So please do attend them. And if you find it beneficial to you, please share it with your friends as well. And let us see you in the next class with logarithms. Okay. So till then, take care guys. Bye-bye. See you. All the best and keep working hard. Okay.